Now to Attorney General Michael Mukasey, who is appointed a special prosecutor, continued the probe into whether political misconduct led to the firing of nine U.S. attorneys. The appointment came at the request of a lengthy Justice Department investigation that released its report Monday. Investigators singled out Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez for his conduct in the firings, accusing him of abdicating his responsibility and questioning his faulty and evasive public statements. The report concludes political pressure was the key factor behind the firing of New Mexico U.S. Attorney David Iglesias and says political pressure played a part in the dismissal of at least two others, Todd Graves of Missouri, Bud Cummins of Arkansas. Federal Prosecutor Nora Danahy of Connecticut will head the probe. Her appointment has raised hope she'll have more leeway as a special prosecutor compel the Bush administration to hand over key documents it refused to give Justice Department investigators. The firing of the U.S. attorneys will likely be remembered as one of the biggest scandals of the Bush administration Justice Department. Well, shortly after investigators released their report, I spoke to investigative journalist Murray on the phone uh, at his home in Washington, D.C. He's covered the U.S. attorney firings extensively for the National Journal. Well, the most interesting thing about it, or what I thought was extraordinary, is the report says that they couldn't get to the bottom of a lot of what happened with the firing of the U.S. attorneys because there is a wholesale lack of cooperation uh, by senior White House officials. Carl Rowe refused to cooperate with the investigation. Uh, give them an interview. Harriet Myers, who was the uh, White House counsel at the time and an architect of this, refused to be interviewed. Uh, two of two deputy White House counsel declined to be interviewed. The White House refused to give over documents. They refused to give over emails. Uh, to show you the absurdity of this, some of the emails and documents that they've refused to give to their, their own Justice Department. I published them in a story. Somebody, somebody in the administration leaked them to me. Um, and so they're a matter of public record. Um, and uh, so essentially you have one part of the government, the White House, refusing to cooperate uh, and assist the Justice Department in, in a very important oversight function. And, uh, you know, I, I would add that the lack of cooperation, the refusal to talk to investigators, the refusal to turn over documents is, is, is virtually unprecedented. And yet the report was scathing. Talk about what they did find. Well, the report did find that the uh, uh, firings, no surprises for those who followed this or most of your listeners, but the firings were politically motivated. The U.S. attorneys were fired uh, to make room for people who were more ideologically or politically attuned to the White House. Uh, a lot of it had apparently to do with the uh, voter fraud agenda, where uh, some Republicans like Karl Rove thought that they were losing because of purported voter fraud uh, by constituency groups associated with Democrats. Uh, these U.S. attorneys actually investigated these claims by the White House, but just couldn't, couldn't bring cases and couldn't, they couldn't find any evidence of this. And so again and again, uh, Carl wrote people at the White House press for the removal of specific U.S. attorneys. Um, and, and the U.S. attorneys who they did remove, uh, one of the things getting lost in the coverage today is that these were the best and the brightest of our public servants. Uh, these were considered the cream of the crop and, and some of the finest U.S. attorneys we've had in a generation. Among the most troubling allegations in the report was the firing of the U.S. Attorney of New Mexico, um, uh, who has really spoken out since actually written a book, David Iglesias. And uh, he talked on Democracy Now!, as well as other places, about the pressure he felt, which he felt was inappropriate, on him uh, from both Senator Pete Domenici, uh, as well as Congress member who is um, now running for senator, um, Heather Wilson. Well, what we found out in the report today is that after Senator Domenici uh, made these inappropriate phone calls, uh, asked for information about investigations, tried to press uh, Iglesias to bring an indictment before an election to affect, help a Republican get elected, that, that Domenici was then lobbying and speaking with uh, political appointees and White House folks to get Iglesias fired. In other words, the U.S. attorney wasn't doing what he wanted. So the senator then went to uh, 
um, and went and simply went to get the guy fired. And, and nobody questioned the propriety of that or, or the intrusion of politics uh, into the process. Uh, the removal of the Missouri U.S. Attorney, uh, Todd Graves, went from Senator Kit Bond uh, right through to the White House? Right. I mean, interestingly, um, uh, Todd Graves, who I know um, and like, is a conservative Republican, uh, was a Bush supporter, an exceptional U.S. attorney, uh, not as well known as some of the others because he, he kept quiet about his firing until the very end. Um, but a, a Republican senator of his own party didn't like him because he had a feud with his brother or for some other obscure reasons. So the senator, once again, you just have a senator say, I'm on a different U.S. attorney, and they get, they get rid of Todd Graves. And I wrote a, a column about Todd Graves. Todd, Todd Graves is, did some extraordinary things when he was in his, uh, wrote a column on the Huffington Post, but when he was in his, his when he was in college, he was diagnosed with a, a rare form of lymphoma and, and wasn't given very long to live. And uh, Todd Graves underwent a course of very toxic and deadly chemotherapy that saved his life. He, he got better. Uh, uh, became a lawyer, became U.S. Attorney in Kansas City. And then when he was the U.S. Attorney in Kansas City, had a case brought to him by the FBI, which was a pharmacist. It's a pretty notorious case or you know, extraordinarily famous case. I bet some listeners have heard about it. But this pharmacist had watered down tens of thousands of prescriptions, including 4,000 prescriptions chemotherapy prescriptions for cancer patients. So essentially he was, this, this pharmacist was wearing down prescriptions, killing people, killing cancer patients. So Todd Graves, the cancer survivor, uh, who almost died of lymphoma, whose life was saved by chemotherapy, grows up to be a U.S. attorney who, who, who puts in prison probably the most uh, single person who's hurt, who's hurt cancer patients, who um, and that's an extraordinary story. And these were the type of people uh, who were fired basically just because of a phone call from a senator or a phone call from a politician, uh, just because they weren't liked. And I think what's left out of this or what gets lost is the, the human dimension of this, like John McKay of Washington State, Iglesias, Paul Charlton. I've got to know some of these uh, U.S. attorneys, but they were, they were the best of a generation. And James Comey, the Deputy Attorney General of the United States, when he testified on the, on the Hill, he said that, that these were U.S. attorneys who were the best, who inspired him. And, and of the 93 U.S. attorneys, it's almost like they went out of their, their way to fire the best ones. So, so the, you know, the loss to the public is, is profound by these firings. And then talk about how it went up the chain of command, especially Myers and Rove, now the Fox commentator. Um, uh, also, Kyle Sampson, the uh, chief of staff of Gonzales. Well, even the president got involved. The president got complaints, I think, about uh, David Iglesias. Carl Rove got complaints to pass them on, and David Iglesias was fired. Um, uh, but essentially, this came from the White House. Even though the White House didn't cooperate with the investigation, even though they didn't turn over documents, and, and people like Carl Rove and Harriet Myers thumbed their nose at the investigators, uh, the report was still able to find that pretty much the general outline of this plan originated in the White House. The firings uh, came from the White House. Um, and, and this was this was something that happened at the highest level. What was it, uh, Murray Wass, that the White House particularly didn't like, for example, about David Iglesias in New Mexico? Um, I, I think, well, they had an issue with him about voting fraud. That was uh, with a number of these U U.S. attorneys. They weren't supposedly investigating uh, supposed voting fraud by Democrats or, or by African Americans or the disabled, all these groups that they thought that were getting away with, with voting fraud. And a 
And that voting fraud issue has largely turned out to be a myth. There's been studies, there's been New York Times did a long piece about it. There really isn't a lot of the supposed voting fraud. So whether it's a myth or an effort by Republicans to suppress votes or to intimidate voters, it's unclear, but um, that was one issue. But the other one was simply that they had pressured Iglesias, uh, the Republican Senator de Medici and Heather uh, Wilson had, had called him and said, why don't you speed up the indictment? Of, of this person so we can win an election. And, and something like that, as is, is crass as it is and uh, as simple as 